Boo! Did that scare you? Was it the eyes? Was it the legs? Do you have arachnophobia by any chance? Are you, are you all scared of me? Hoi there, it is I, your evil demon overlord rain hat, and this is my OC Muffet, who I personally find rather adorable, at least. This version of her is undeniably so. You might recognise this from Spicality 2021. I made her just before I went to therapy for my arachnophobia, so she's rather important to me, but I'll get back to her later. Phobia. Noun. An extreme or irrational fear of, or aversion to something. Arachnophobia. Noun. Extreme or irrational fear of spiders. Phobias develop in people who have an exaggerated feeling of danger surrounding something. Phobias are a type of anxiety disorder that have the potential to seriously affect a person's everyday life. They don't even have to come into contact with the thing they are afraid of to feel anxiety and panic. Sometimes the paranoia of potentially having to encounter the source of the phobia is all it takes to speed up their heart rate. In April of 2019, multiple news publications reported on a particular car crash incident in New York. A woman had noticed a spider in the front seat of her car, which caused her to panic and lose control of the vehicle. Gladly, she had only suffered a leg injury as a result of it. Growing up, I had always joked about my likely cause of death being spider-related. Maybe one would cause my heart to stop for a second too long, or one may have gotten too close to me while I was conveniently on the edge of a balcony multiple stories into the air. The reality is, the thoughtless responses that phobias bring out of us do not only have the potential to harm us, but those around us. Many of us grow up in environments that hinder positive growth towards overcoming fears. Maybe because our role models taught us to fear through their own fearful behaviour. Maybe we were scolded after asking for help. Maybe we were forced into situations that only exacerbated the problem. Not a lot of people can sympathise with a grown adult trembling with fear as a street cat brushes past their leg but it doesn't make their experience with feeling threatened any less real. Generally speaking, it had the same adult treated the cat like those with arachnophobia treat spiders. The person would be arrested and detained. The cat, likely deceased or permanently injured. The social expectation put upon us on how to treat certain types of animals intrigued me, since I used to be afraid of cats and dogs, but I grew out of it. Had it been frowned upon to kill spiders, would I have also grown out of the phobia? Symptoms may include unsteadiness, dizziness, and lightheadedness, nausea, sweating, increased heart rate or palpitations, shortness of breath, trembling or shaking, an upset stomach. Up until recently, I had always considered myself an arachnophobe, so violently so I truly believed therapy would do nothing but amplify my fear to an unlivable degree. I'd learned about different types of therapy in school. The one example that stuck with me the longest is exposure therapy, where you lock someone in a room with a thing they are afraid of until they become so exhausted from being afraid, they start feeling nothing towards the thing they are once afraid of. Well, assuming it worked anyway. Had it not worked, however, you would have just forced that person to go through another traumatic and negative experience for no reason. And honestly, it sounds very unethical. I'm not even sure if people are allowed to do this nowadays. One of my earliest memories as a child is being riddled with anxiety as I watch my mother complain to my brothers about how lost and confused she is regarding what I had told her. The boys were still in bed, probably about to go to sleep or had recently been woken up from their sleep. Though it's hard to remember exactly what I said word for word, I was explaining to her all the ghostly cobwebs and spiders I was seeing crawling all over the house at night. It was probably just my imagination, or hallucination of sorts, because of course, there was nothing there. While I was awake, spiders that apparently only I could see haunted me, and while I was asleep, they haunted my dreams. Even now, I still have dreams about spiders spooking me, but as a child, there was this one recurring dream I had of my city being invaded by knee-high, jet-black crawlers. I always tried to jump on them, to kill them, but every time I did, they would split into two, completely unharmed, then they would grow back to their original size, only making the problem worse. The dreams would always end up with me being surrounded by an ungodly amount of spiders, and then the next night I would do it all over again. 
As I grew older, the hallucinations stopped, and the dreams about the giant spiders became fewer, but my anxiety towards being in the presence of a spider only became more and more intense. There had been no past events of trauma, as far as I could remember, that started this, and none of my immediate family had arachnophobia as far as I was concerned. I had just always been terribly afraid of spiders. Every day I woke up and checked the corners of every room before I fully commit to comfortably walking in there. Every car I got into, every shoe I put on, there was always the potential for spiders and I had to check everything. I knew what places to avoid, the shed, the downstairs bathroom, the living room and the dining room, but no matter how hard I would try to avoid them, I always found myself face to face with them. It was a choice between potentially annoying my family asking them to remove the spider or grabbing the vacuum cleaner and doing it myself. The only problem was, I only had the mental strength to vacuum certain types of spiders, and only if they were small enough. When it wasn't real spiders frightening me, it was hair or dirt or a bit of fluff that I had mistaken for one. And if it wasn't in real life, it would be in a dream. Though I rarely had them as an adult, they still had the potential to result in me waking up panicking, shaking, or both. But it wasn't like I could understand that well, or explain that well my feelings surrounding the creatures. I was scared, I tried to be brave, and the fear wouldn't go away. Unfortunately, not everyone understood that. And I wasn't always faced with a positive reaction. I was apparently too old to still have a phobia. My reactions were too dramatic. I was too unreasonable. The reality was, no logic, reasoning, or disappointment could cure me, or anyone really. Diagnosing phobias. Phobias are not usually formally diagnosed. Most people with a phobia are fully aware of the problem. A person will sometimes choose to live with a phobia, taking great care to avoid the object or situation they're afraid of. But if you have a phobia, continually trying to avoid what you're afraid of will make the situation worse. One of the first things that shows up when you google arachnophobia is arachnophobia, a 1990 American comedy horror film directed by Frank Marshall. This wouldn't be a video on arachnophobia if I never mentioned it. While watching the movie, I had a hard time understanding what was so comedic about it. As an arachnophobe, it would probably terrify me, but as someone who no longer has arachnophobia, I found it rather ridiculous and found myself laughing at how unrealistic and dramatic some things were. I was actually surprised at my mother for being so disgusted by that one scene with a spider in the shower. Meanwhile, the concept made me chuckle and I actually ended up finding the little baby spider adorable. I only really laugh at maybe one joke in the film, the rest of the time was me laughing at things I probably shouldn't have. The film is about an entomologist, James Atherton, who captures a newly discovered spider. It is believed to be very dangerous and of prehistoric origin. During the expedition, we, we witness the photographer, who was with James, being bitten from one of the spiders. The result is a violent seizure followed by death. His body is put into a coffin and sent back to his home in Kanema, California, where the main part of the movie takes place. But the dangerous spider had crawled in and was also taken to Kanema. It survives the journey there by sucking the blood of the corpse or something. But the spider in particular is where all the problems start. The spider escapes into the town, reproduces with a local spider, and their babies create havoc, including killing people. We follow a doctor called Ross Jennings, who suffers from arachnophobia as he slowly figures out what is going on, with the help of some friends and the entomologist, James, and tries to save the town from the killer spider invasion. Arachnophobia debuted at number three behind two other films, earning eight million dollars over its first weekend. The film was a financial success, grossing 52, 53 billion domestically and an additional 30 million dollars in video rentals. I'm not sure if that's a lot, but apparently it was successful. But it seems important enough to bring up here. As an arachnophobe, I would never watch such a thing. I wouldn't even watch Lucas the Spider. But it was very interesting seeing the old version of myself in someone else. I could relate to Ross's paranoia surrounding cobwebs and being scared stiff, unable to move when faced with the tiny eight-legged beast. Being able to put on a brave face in front of children or people who are meant to respect you was also an interesting thing I saw in the movie. I found myself able to cope a lot better if I was afraid of putting a child in danger or embarrassing myself in front of my boss or a classmate. The panic was still there on the inside, but I found myself able to cope with a lot more. Ross put in a lot of effort to save his family from a spider attack, but after he was sure they were safe, he lost it and put himself in a lot of danger after many moments of panic and bad decisions. 
I was internally screaming for him to just move faster or just move the spider out of the way or something. But I recalled my own past feelings of panic and the foolish things emotions make you do, and in my moment of judging him, I wondered how much harsh I might have been on him had I not known his struggles. But then I realised how stupid everything was and lost a small bit of sympathy I'd gained for him and laughed at him instead. Arachnophobia. Fear of spiders. Ophidiophobia. Fear of snakes. Acrophobia. Fear of heights. Aerophobia. Fear of flying. Cynophobia. Fear of dogs. Astrophobia. Fear of thunder and lightning. Trypanophobia. Fear of injections. Social phobia. Social anxiety disorder. Agoraphobia. Fear of situations where escape may be difficult. Mysophobia. Fear of jams. Claustrophobia. Fear of small spaces. Glossophobia. Fear of public speaking. On September 14th, 2021, the day before my birthday, a presumably large spider was in my room. At least, it was far too big for me to vacuum confidently without losing my cool. My options were sleep downstairs, stay up all night, or wake up my mother. Well, it was late and I wanted to sleep in my bed, so I woke her up. She was groggy and frustrated and I got an earful, but after a while the spider was taken care of, but not after some tears and frustration were from my part. I hated that I was a problem and had to rely on other people at random times out of my control. Thoughts of not being able to live by myself or with other arachnophobes, because that would just cause too many spider-related problems. I thought about how much it was worth to me, and the answer came back as well over £1,000. And yes, I was willing to risk worsening my condition if it meant that there was a small chance things would get better. I thought it would take days, even months, and a lot of money, but the next day I found something a lot better. Something that permanently changed everything. And all it took was £350 and two nights in a pretty hotel in London. So I booked a session with Creature Courage for October. Spicality was also around the corner, so what better time than to remake my Spider Girl Muffet? What is Creature Courage? Creature Courage is a professional and effective animal phobia therapy, using a variety of proven phobia techniques in a fun and interesting way. Our therapy. We at Creature Courage know how debilitating and embarrassing an animal phobia can be. It can be so frustrating when others do not understand that you can't just get over it, and this is an issue that is deeper than what we can simply rationalise. You are not alone. You would be surprised about how common these phobias are. And we are here to support you and achieve a liberating change that you may never have thought possible in just a few hours. We run fun experience workshops and one-on-one -on -one therapy to powerfully change your life and to overcome common animal phobias. Our therapy is carefully designed with our skilled psychologists and hypnotherapists to effectively change mindsets to break free of phobias, fears, and anxieties around animals. The therapy is designed to not only be life-changing, healing, and educational, but also interesting and exciting. We use a combination of education, art therapy, cognitive therapy, NLP techniques, hype, hypnotherapy, and an immersive therapy option to achieve our incredibly high success rate. The techniques we teach can help you build overall confidence and stay in control of your emotions in any stressful situation you may face in life. Speakality is a Halloween avatar and world creators contest, or jam as they call it now, held every October by VRChat. I had entered in 2020 with Muffet and did a remake for her in 2021. The second one being cuter, more low poly and a lot more interactive than the first version, which was more or less just me showing off texturing and that's about as far as I took it. I had first designed with the question in mind, what scares me? And of course there was only one thing that really stood out. So taking inspiration from the nursery rhyme, Little Miss Muffet, apparently from the 16th century, and Sadako Yamamura from The Ring, Muffet was born. It was a struggle making her, for the first time, having to look up spiders for reference was probably the worst part. The second time was easier since I mostly just reference the first model, plus the remake was a lot cuter. I submitted her for the speakality jam before I left for therapy and packed my bags for London. I was only going to be needed from 10.45am to around 6pm, but I still wanted to give myself a lot of time for stuff to go wrong. I went to London on the 7th, therapy on the 8th, and then headed home on the 9th. I was fully aware that this failing would be a possibility, but as I already established, having more control over this part of my life was something I wanted bad enough to take more risks than I've ever taken before. For context, I went to a arachnid convention in January, I watched the dark den, tarantula cat and exotic slayer for fun, and am now the proud mother of two baby jumping spiders. Spoiler, the therapy worked. 
I learned a lot about spiders during therapy, I tried to keep an open mind and focus during hypno, and I still did cry when my therapist, Britton Kitten, you can follow her below, brought a house spider a little too near to me. No, the tears were not because I was emotional, it was because I was piss scared. But it didn't take too too long to calm down. The anxiety lingered for a while and my confidence took a while to build up, but it only took three months for me to confidently say I was arachnophobia free, and only five to six hours to say I was a lot less scared of spiders than I was before therapy. On top of that, and to my surprise, I ended up winning Spookality and have some cool stuff from that if you want to see in this video. Oh, and my jumpers are called Misa and Muffet. They don't eat as much as I want them to, but they're pretty cute fly assassins and I'm glad to have them doing crime in my presence. Hopefully this video was informative or entertaining or interesting. Let me know if you like this kind of content in the comments. Or like, dislike, whatever. Arachnophobia has been a big part of my life. Being able to leave it behind in 2021 has been a big deal for me. I feel like I spent the majority of my life being judged and misunderstood surrounding the topic. Now I'm finding myself on the opposite side of the spectrum, being unreasonably unscared of spiders, and my family are concerned I might buy a tarantula. Jokes on them, that only motivates me more. But I won't, because I'm a bunny person and jumping spiders are good enough for me. Maybe someone you know might find this video interesting. Maybe someone with arachnophobia. Very thank you to Patrons. Crimjoy, Dangleberry, Vinventive, Dystopian Chell, Mike Call, Spud the Cat, Lutheru, Harold Brabinitz, The Meaty Gamer, Abelols, Kyle D. Bowers. See you in the next video. Farewell!